the record button, we'll get started. Good morning, welcome in 630. June, what's today, the 17th, 16th? 17th. 17th, wow. 17th June 17th for another Friday safety focus of the week. Today's, this week's code of conduct is to respect the property of others. <coughs> Mr. Dye, any insight into this code item this week? It can be anything from your co-workers lunch to the driveway that we don't want to turn our big truck around in you know a lot of times it's people's property right next to a job site where we're trying to work close to so respecting respecting our space it's it's hard when we're when we got a lot of big equipment and stuff but it's very easy to to get people uh upset when we put stuff on their property when we're working next to it agreed and a lot of it's uh, how we handle that communication when they do have an issue. Just little things like picking up our coffee cups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excellent job this week. Uh, another seven days without a recordable. Um, so we're up to 45 day count as we're approaching quarter three at the end of the month. So let's continue to follow best practices. Remember to start that day off with a good briefing complete the JHA, communicate the hazards across all lines on site, and contact health and safety. If there's any safety concerns, unsafe conditions that you want to discuss. Uh, after Matt, this meeting, I'm going to sign off for... A moment. Hey, Matt. Yep. Can you hold the slide a minute? <clears throat> I think we should take a moment and just put Austin's phone number in. Yep. So Austin is part of the safety department now, and certainly everyone has matt's phone number but probably doesn't have austin's and i'm going to put it in my contact list right now yeah and that's kind of what i was saying ken after this meeting i'm signing off for the rest of the day I'm gonna take okay. a, i'm on a little holiday this weekend so it'd be great, great if i didn't get any phone calls but i might if i do i'll take them but here's austin's number so feel free to Put it in the phone and uh, Austin will also send out an email to global uh, emails to uh, kind of get his email address and his phone numbers out there for everybody. Yeah, good. So A02809-1648. Yep. Save. There. Perfect. Okay. And Austin, feel free to call me if there's any issues too. That you all right, are uncomfortable good. with, okay? Or Ben. All right. Okay. Okay. Appreciate let's move it. on to the program. Yeah. So this week I wanted to kind of highlight unsafe conditions that we're we're seeing more and more frequently. Um, we have a, a failing dig safe system going on currently. Uh, we're continuing seeing issues with USIC, whom is the locator for GMP. And I really wanted to highlight uh, the importance of what we can do to mitigate our exposure to this unsafe condition before, or as we're hopeful in the next month to come, we're gonna see improvement as it's looking like a new locator is coming into town to correct this unsafe condition. However, there's been a lot of close encounters we have seen this week and previous weeks uh, striking underground power it can be very deadly very dangerous as you can see in this photo how severe uh, it can be if we get an excavator bucket a directional drill really anything into any any power lines buried power lines in the ground so proactive what we can do before we get to the site we can review our X, X tick website I'm going to quickly fire that up and kind of toggle around and show uh, the individuals that are on the meeting how to kind of look to see what has been suppressed and what hasn't. So if the service area has not been suppressed, best practice is to call 811, inform Dig Safe that the ticket number uh, has not been serviced and needs to be located. And then if the facility 
hasn't been marked during the shift of when we notified Dig Safe, we should call Health and Safety, pretty much call myself, and then I'll I'll fill out a report to public uh, the Vermont Public Service Board. Um, that's what we've been um, hearing from um, with Dave Attic at Vermont Gas as he's been kind of taking the lead reporting all the issues that we're having uh, with USIC. So I'm going to quickly just show the website. Can everybody see this screen? Yep. So here's the exact ticket. Everyone that has been putting dig safes out. Uh, again, we have our own company ID number. You can look at the tickets that you've been working on, or you can look at my company tickets, and that's all the tickets that ECI has established. So if we just like choose a project, say um, we'll look down Mount Pillar. We had an underground utility issue in Mount Pillar. You get the ticket, the text, and then this service area tab is what you want to click on. And then you can look down, okay, suppressed. Uh, Barry Amerigas, which is propane, they've notified us. They let us know that there's no known utilities in the area. Same thing with Mount Pillar City. Um, they've notified us and they've been out. You can see here, we call this in June 13th. We still haven't seen Comcast, Consolidation, Green Mountain Power, which is USIC. So they haven't even been on site yet. And this ticket was cleared uh, the 15th and it's now the 17th. So we're seeing long, long lag period. So th this is a prime example where we should probably call 811 notify saying, hey, they're outside their 48 hours of marking utilities uh, and try to get somebody there ASAP. So we don't have any issues, especially when it comes to Green Mountain Power. Again, that's the one that we really want to focus on. So it's Matt, pretty easy, easy to toggle around. Matt, what does suppressed mean? That means uh, that they've, so they've addressed suppressed it means time. has been executed. Oh, yeah. Strange way of putting it. Very yes, strange. I agree. Um, so it, so yes is mean we've been notified. Either a locator has been to the site or we've seen a digital email saying that all clear. And that's what usually what Amerigas does. It's it's an email. This will be to Jim because Jim called it in. Jim got an email from Amerigas saying you're all clear. Um, How do you get to this website? So it's uh, exact.digsafe.com. Exacttix.digsafe.com, right? Yeah. And if you need help establishing your own um, user, so, user username and login, just let us know and we can, so, we can so help Matt, you out. So we, we can everyone can have their own login on how do we associate it with ECI? So it, it's our company ID number, which right here is 13405. Yep. And they'll let us do that as long as they'll let anybody do that. Yep. So this but, is Alec Letourneau. He called in his own dig safe ticket for Hardwick. <clears throat> and we all have access to this. Every every person in our company has access to this website. And it's a great way for us to always kind of go in and, and verify what is being serviced in our area. So like Can in I Hardwick right now, Hardwick Electric has notified us. Consolidation Communication has not. So that hasn't been located yet on site. I'd like to say too, um, make sure you put your phone number in on the ticket. Good one, Brian. Yeah. Pay attention to it because people aren't doing it, and I seem to be getting all the dig safe calls when they're looking for areas or what the job is. I don't know every job. That's Somehow good to know. I'll put your name down, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. does. And Brian, like you and I, I've got my own ID number probably. Yeah, me too. I think and, we all probably do. Yeah. Yeah. And that everybody's own ID is the excavator ID number right here. Got you. But the biggest thing is when you do sign up is this company ID is most importantly. But this is a good tool, especially for the pre planners out there. When you're curious to see if a, if the area has been dig safe, you can go in here under service areas and see what has been taken care of and what hasn't. 
So do you have to tell, like if we get new employees, do you guys have to send something to exact ticks to give us author give them authorization to log into our account? No. So anybody no. can log into our account, even people that don't work here if they want to, if they know uh, our number. I that's if a great question. Company ID. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, sometimes there's a you have to prove that you have yeah. have done an, a pre a, a ticket ahead of time oh. over the phone. And yeah, sometimes you have to 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 create an account. Yeah. You have to show them that you've done a ticket. Just thinking about the security or whatever this thing is yeah. for that account. Yeah. <clears throat> So that, that's kind of that. And I, I just wanted to show everybody those little tricks because we get a lot of calls. Um, and I was just trying to inform people of this this resource tool that is available to us and helps us kind of see what's what's what. And then I'll definitely help out on the public service board stuff. That's actually the only way I even do dig safes anymore. I don't even call them in. Yeah, that's it's becoming more and more norm, um, and it's a lot easier and, and more friendly than than the answering service. I've had good experiences lately with calling you in dig safe. Good. So unfortunately, there's a lot of times where all of our equipment, manpower are already on site, and we really can't be so proactive. So we just got to be very reactive. So when that's the case. Uh, because our current climate and these unsafe conditions that are being presented to us, we need to really try to make sure that we don't assume accuracy by USIC currently. Um, one of the things is, is I think they know the writing on the wall is that they're all about to get terminated. Um, so I don't really, personally, I don't think the care is there and and really doing a thorough job is being conducted out there in the field so we should try to do our best to really hone in and, and survey our area for potential facilities if there if you see power boxes if you see sweeps off of telephone poles and there's no marks especially when it comes to power let's get on the the phone make some phone calls let's try to Health and safety will try to get out there and perform some locating service for us internally, um, just so we can at least make sure that power is being taken care of, because that's what we don't want to see. We don't want to have us strike a power line. Let's try to take photos before we dig, before we do any ground disturbance whatsoever. Um, even milling, we got into a, a communication cable up in Mount Pelier with our mill. Uh, it was so shallow. Um, so again, it's very important to take those pictures ahead of time if you can. But right after an incident occurs, make sure you're we're grabbing photos, especially if the area isn't marked. And then it's always have a spotter. The mill could get into the shallow utility. I mean, in that case, even a snowplow could get it. Well, this yeah, was, it was actually the reclaimer again. So we were eight inches. Uh, oh, okay. The All communication right. a line that wasn't marked. Yeah, it's pretty shallow though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess. And eight inches, you can peel a lot with a big plow off the edges, off the shoulder, you know. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and then always use a spotter, you know, always have someone kind of watching for trench lines, you know, watching for any um, unknowns. You might be able to see something on the other side of the bucket. So again, always have that spotter uh, to stop before we get in, before we encounter uh, a facility. So that's really kind of all I have. Changes to the public facility locators are on the horizon, I'm, I've been told. Um, so hopefully continue with our efforts to re do this reporting and it's helping. Uh, according to Dave Attic, it's helping a lot. Um, so hopefully in, in the next weeks to come, we'll be able to uh, disclose more information and get all the phone numbers that we need for the new locating company. But until that happens, hopefully today's focus will prevent an injury and that's our goal. So let's really focus in on those those power lines because those are the ones that really gonna could potentially harm somebody. Hey, hey Matt, what's our company ID again? Just so everybody knows. 
for one exactly three four zero five. Okay, thank you. One Sorry. three four zero five. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone has any follow up questions? Uh, feel free to contact myself um, after this. And uh, that's all I have for my part. So, Ken, if you got okay. anything to add, feel free. If not, take it away. Oh, I'm good. Let's see here. I guess the other thing is just to stop and think before you dig, no matter what. Even, and I think the idea that uh, that a replacement to USIC is going to solve everything is is maybe the case, but I think we shouldn't be too optimistic on the quality of anybody's. Uh, markings we have to rely on them to some degree but we should always be questioning the you know the accuracy and think about the potential depths and do our you know our hand dig at these locations that are identified so we can verify that they do exist where they're supposed to yeah great great uh best practices there ken appreciate it right don't give up the best practice because you get a mark on the ground. Exactly. OK, I clicked over. Do you see my screen? We do. OK. Things around here so I can scroll better. So we've got a uh, couple announcements here. Whoops. I'm a little trouble. Do you still see my screen? Yes. OK. Happy Father's Day. I'm trying to navigate my screen and move the, the little box showing Matt's face around out of my cursor area. So announcements, happy Father's Day. Can you believe it? It's Father's Day weekend. So happy Father's Day to all our ECI dads. And also Juneteenth is now a federally recognized holiday. And so happy Juneteenth, especially to our employees that our ancestors of slaves. Juneteenth is a celebration of the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States and is recognition in and is recognition of a historic moment on June 19th, 1865 in Galveston, Texas, after the Civil War. Federal offices are now closed on Juneteenth, but it'll be the, recognized on the 20th on Monday. We are open. And I think the state offices, I believe, are open this year and I believe next year they're yes, going to be yeah, closed. Yeah, state is open. Yep. And then I believe that the city of Burlington is closed for any yes, of their <laughs> public works and all that. So, OK. New employees. Oh, do I not have pictures? Where's my pictures? Download pictures. There we go. Give it a moment. To go back down. OK, we have two new employees this week. We have Jake Barakayan, if I pronounced Jake's name right. I hope I did, and I apologize if I didn't. So welcome, Jake. And then we have Jay Gould. So welcome, Jake and Jay. Hopefully I don't get you mixed up. And the health care premium holiday is still ongoing and it's I think next week is the last week. I'll have to verify that before I publish this next week's email with this announcement, but I think this is it. Been a good run of no health care premiums. The uh, wellness program here again. If you're not part of it, check it out because uh, and the only way to really check it out is just make an appointment. Get down there and do it because <clears throat> there's no obligation. There's no charge to the employee and there's only a positive upside. So it's just a matter of. Calling up at a Champlain Medical say I'm from ECI and I want to join a wellness program and they'll set you up with an appointment it takes about an hour total. And you'll be more protected than you are, I'm sure, as far as the health and wellness, but also for, you know. Injuries that happen, you know, non work related injuries. So at home, sprain an ankle, 
that happened to me right before no right after i signed up so i was all signed up and i had sprained my ankle so i went to them for attention it was great weather uh, outlook here we've got kind of some cooler weather interesting for the weekend on saturday a little bit of showery but also only in the 50s as a high a little bit better on juneteenth and father's day and and it looks like some nice days at least on monday and hopefully throughout the week so this is a, a follow-up after the completion of this job is the vtrans colchester essex nh31 or 34 and that's the route 15 shared use path or the bike path and we recently completed this uh this project under a significant after a significant delay at last year due to utility relocation by others that wasn't completed as schedule so that's kind of disruptive and we had to come back in the spring this spring to uh, get things buttoned up and cleaned up and line striped and final paving and all that so ECI was contracted with VTrans on this job to construct the new shared use path from Susie Wilson Road to Essex in Essex to Lime Kiln in Colchester. The 10 foot wide, 1.64 mile long project provides safer access for cyclists traveling through to Burlington and Winooski. The path includes convenient access to 40th and Allen and Fannie Allen Hospital. And the project also includes pedestrian signal upgrades, pavement markings, sidewalk, minor drainage improvements and other related work and i can say that that was a really challenging area to get through on a bike on a bicycle i don't think they made it as good as they could have i did ride it last night took a few pictures there are a couple of things one getting on it i came from the essex side got on it easy because i've got across susie wilson road and and just pulled in but then when you get out at the opposite end you're like dumped off on the middle of you know kind of at the end of lime kiln and there's no place to go you it's there's no smooth transition to get back because you're on the wrong side of the road at that point in the direction i was traveling <laughs> so i managed but although i was going to take the sidewalk a little further and go out onto the road in a driveway and cut across kind of the island at the end of lime kiln and there was no wheelchair ramp at the end of the sidewalk really? wow yeah <laughs> That next piece of sidewalk, no wheelchair ramp. Crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't have guessed that, especially after this job, right? <laughs> right. They should have just gone another 50, 60 feet and made a transition, nice mm -hmm. transition. So there's the plan all the way from Lime Kiln Road, in front of St. Mike's, Fanny Allen, 40th and Allen, and to Sil Susie Wilson Road. And here's a couple pictures in the last few weeks here. Some final paving just completed, it looks like, and these couple coming pictures. See the ECI equipment trailer in the background. That looks like right in front of Fanny Allen. Fanny Allen, yeah, right in front of Fanny Allen. Links. Yeah. Nice looking map there. There's some hmm. concrete sidewalk with tactile surfaces within the project zone. My complaint was more outside of the zone, <laughs> beyond the work. This is uh, some more work. This looks like the National Guard Road, I think. Looks like it. Probably. Yep. Yep. Get the get the grass uh, and the matting down, and then oh, let me get back here. I skipped too far ahead. This is a kind of a narrow photo. This is in looking back towards that tower. By Susie Wilson Road, you can see uh, looks like Tim Clark's uh, truck back there on the sidewalk building that last section. That one of the two sections we had to finish this year. And uh, let's see, it says the the Buffalo Calvary, right? That's what it is. There's a sign out there. If you haven't checked out some of these signs in Vermont, I always stop when I'm on a bicycle, especially. Um, you know that it's there's a lot of cool history, and the the one about the the Buffalo Cavalry and 40th and Allen and the, the the soldiers that were the black soldiers that were trained there and resided there is is pretty interesting stuff in our history right here in Burlington and Colchester actually. And let's see here the the new shared use path. This is a rendering 
kind of along that 40th and Allen, just probably opposite of that sign looking in towards the west. Looks kind of nice in that photo. It's very, uh, you know, very nice looking. You don't see any trash. <laughs> they don't put trash. It's not that realistic, right? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. They're just looking at a similar spot. The grass is mostly started. You know, they don't show a manhole cover in that either. <laughs> Actually, I don't think they showed the utility, the above uh, totally ground power, probably the overhead power. Oh, no, nice and clear there. <laughs> How convenient. So let's see, zooming, coming down, down, down here. Okay, this is a crossing at the end of uh, 40th and Allen, looking towards Fanny Allen. And there's at Fanny Allen, we got a kind of an interesting little uh, intersection there around the main entrance. So it's good all the line striping in. Tactile surfaces, and that's what I got. I got from the photo archives. Here's a picture, speaking of Father's Day. This is myself and Scotty getting a haircut by our dad, and that's about 1965. So pretty cool, you know, it's like, uh, Times haven't changed now. Look at, you know, I, I get my hair cut the same way now at home, <laughs> especially in the summer. So that's what I got. Everybody have a happy Father's Day, happy Juneteenth, and be safe out there. And uh, hopefully it looks like we get some good weather for the next couple of days. Yeah, I'll turn it back to you, Matt. Thanks, Ken. Happy Father's Day. Let's have a nice, safe day out there. Yep, for sure. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.